The very first pair of shoe Jordans I bought to start my collection, um, the Bread Fours, uh, one of my favorite shoes. Um, actually bought them from from Bull Bull, uh, a friend of mine who plays for the Nuggets now. Um, ever since then, I just I haven't stopped, and now it's really becoming a problem. But it's a good problem. Wait, but, so you um, bought them from Bull Bull? Did they fit them? All right, y'all, what's up? Welcome to The Vibes. I got Isaiah Simmons with me on this specific episode, linebacker for the Arizona Cardinals. But, you know, we like to get to know our players off the field. You know, you're, you got a big personality. You know, a lot of people don't get to see that side of you. But, you know, I dug in deep. I got to talk to your big bro, Victor Simmons. And he gave me a couple of stories that, you know, I need to confirm with you. I need to get your perspective on it. Um, and it all started when you were what younger. You used to play with his uh, with his friends, playing outside in, in the football field in the green yard. What truly inspired you to be like? You know what? I don't want to play with kids of my age, but I want to play with my big brother and his friends. Basically, um, just being that little brother, I just wanted to be better him at anything. I didn't really care what it was, uh, anything. Like I just wanted to be better than him at it. So if that caused me to play with his friends uh, in the backyard playing football, then then that's just what it was. Um, and truly, I feel like that's what you know allowed me to to learn football the way I do, and to ultimately just become the player that I've been able to become. Just because my whole life I've just grown up playing with him, and then also you know my older cousin um, before we had moved. So yeah, um, definitely. Definitely was was trying to get after him, just be better him at everything. Cause that's what your older cousin did with Victor, right? Victor used to play with his yeah, friends. Exactly. So then Victor was like, you know what? I'm gonna bring Isaiah and have him play with me. He actually then, hated it though. He hated when I was around. Why mom, though? Mom, tell him go. I, I'm the little brother, you know. It's, you don't want the little brother around, but um, yeah, I would I would always sneak my way in there some way. Your, your moms hated it. Your pops. I mean, he kind of enjoyed it because then now, now you want to go play with kids your age and you was like breaking arms and injuring a kid yeah, or two was, per game. Good, like, what, what was that like? Now you went from playing with older kids and then now you're playing with kids your age. What was that experience like? Yeah. Um, so then I would go into Little League football, kids my age. And uh, after the games, I would always remember parents, referees, coaches, they would always after every game, someone would come up to me and my parents when we were walking out and, you know, they would just give some type of compliment like, oh, he's going to be special one day. And I'll never forget this ref when I was a little league. Um, he's like six, seven. That's why, you know, I always remembered him because he was so tall. And he was like, you're special. Like, uh, I'll see you on Sundays one day. And, you know, I just never forgot that. I always remembered. But, um, but yeah, when I got out there with kids my age, um, yeah, it got kind of ugly. You know, I was, I was hitting guys, running the balls, running back. How old were you at this point, though? Probably like no older than 10, less than 10. I mean, probably. I mean, I started playing tackle football second grade, so could be even younger than that. Second grade is like, bro, that's like six, seven years old. Yeah. So then when you started playing tackle football at that age, your brother was already, let's say you're in second grade right now. Your brother mm -hmm. was what? In sixth six grade. Yep. Sixth six six grade. grade. So you're playing with like six graders. And, yeah. And it's just Had funny. No business doing that. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, now you put it into perspective. At that moment, your brother didn't want you around. But then listen to what he said. Now you fast forward to these days. It was like he was actually our age playing with us. It's crazy how fast he caught on and he understood football. So he was more of a smarter player then because he wasn't the biggest. He wasn't the strongest. But now he is the biggest <laughs> and pretty close to the strongest. And it's crazy to see it all come together. So, I mean, at that at that point, he didn't want you around. But then now listening and listening to him say, you know what, it all paid off basically. How does that make you feel? Yeah, I mean, that I mean that definitely just made me smile because to this day, I always thought he just hated me being around him and all his friends. So, uh, you know, I'm glad now we're actually funny because we're all friends now. Now you're older, you know, age doesn't really matter as much. Now they're uh, asking you for tickets and everything, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah so, they're asking you, to, so you know, so to spot them a chip or something like that. So it's right? just, it's a full circle, you know, it just, I just wanted to let you know that your brother appreciated you being around at that time. Yeah. He might not have showed it. I appreciate I'm a, that. I appreciate that. I'm, yeah. a, I'm a little brother too, so I, I understand okay. that, that feeling of like your older brother not wanting to be around. When I grow up, I want to live in a mansion. Of 
course, Mansion was spelled completely wrong. Mm -hmm. And I also want to play in the NFL. And I also want to work at Nebraska Furniture Mart. Like, why do you want, why are those your goals? <laughs> <laughs> From my understanding, there's a letter you wrote to yourself when you were younger. What grade were you in? I want to say maybe the third grade. I think it was the third grade. So you're in third grade. We all have that moment where we write a letter to ourselves just so in the future we can go back and be like, you know what, we actually accomplished this. But your dream was, one, to, have, to live in a mansion, two, to play in the NFL, and three, to work at a furniture store. Yeah. <laughs> so the immediate question that I had for myself is, how do you go from living in a mansion, playing in, to, in the NFL, to now working at a furniture store? Uh, there's this really big furniture store where I'm from called Nebraska Furniture Mart. And um, my mom used to work uh, in the human resources department and my dad was a furniture salesman. And I mean, I don't know, like they're, those are my heroes, you know, like those are people who provided for me. So just seeing them being able to provide for me and my whole family, and that's what they did. I'm like, well, that's what I want to do too. Like, I don't want to go any other path. If this is, if I can live like this and do all this and have fun, I'm like, then I just want to do the same thing. And, um, you know, I, I, don't, I don't know. I guess that's just, I just wanted to work at a furniture store, but uh, I'm not too upset. I took a different route. <laughs> and, uh, you know, my dad actually still works there to this day. Um, yeah, I really admire him, you know, for working there, always being able to you know, to provide for us, never had to worry for anything going. So at this young age, you're already playing with older guys or older kids, you're athletic, you're fast, you're creative, you have this imagination of playing in the NFL and, you know, working at a furniture store and having a mansion and whatnot, but you was also hustling from what I remember. From what, from what I was told talking to Victor, there was a situation where you were selling lollipops due to a school fundraiser. Would you remember that, that time? What grade were you in? Uh, we did it every year, but uh, this incident I'm sure you're talking about was in, uh, I believe it was fourth grade. So at this point, you're like, what, eight, eight, yeah, nine years old? There. And this was, that's what blew me away, because at eight, nine years old, I mean, I'm over here playing video games, you know, FIFA or whatnot. But your brother said that for this fundraiser, you actually finesse somebody $135 for 200 lollipops. So let me just show you what he said, and then I want to hear your perspective from it. We had this annual like lollipop sale for like fundraisers in elementary school. My dad gets a call from the school one day, says, Mr. Simmons, um, I think we got something that you might want to come take a look at. And there's a $135 check written in pencil for like 200 lollipops because he wanted to win the contest that bad. So first of all, did you win? No. <laughs> so you tried, you tried to hustle your way to winning this competition. When, what happened after? Well, I got caught. Time? You got caught? Yeah. Um, not smart to write a check in pencil and not so sign it. You wrote that. You I wrote, wrote it. Yeah. So um, one day I just woke up. So the prize, the way the prizes went is if you sold a certain amount, then you get the best prize and then you're also the top seller, which is like bonus on top in the classroom, you know? So get a little extra privileges, you know, things that really matter when you're, when you're in, yeah, in elementary, yeah. those things matter. Um, so I, I just got the bright idea. I looked, this is bad, but <laughs> I looked at my dad's wallet, no cash was in there. Um, and then, and I just, I just knew I was gonna win because my dad, he would always leave cash in his wallet for me and my brother for lunch. Um, in case we ever like didn't have any lunch money on our books or whatever. So he'd always leave cash in his wallet for us to get, to take for lunch. And there was nothing there. So me and my brother probably took it. Um, so I, I got the bright idea. Let me just write a check. So I'm sitting there trying to replicate my dad's, <laughs> signature. my dad's, <laughs> not even the signature, just his handwriting, mm. trying to so-called write in cursive, uh, wasn't cursive. Um, so I wrote out a check in pencil never signed it and uh yeah they found out uh got called to the office dad was not too happy um and oh i lost obviously you got yeah, disqualified or something yeah so that's where the hustling the competitiveness yeah i just i just wanted to win i just wanted to win and that's not the way to win let's switch gears a little bit here um 
you know, you go to middle school, you're in the junior, you know, track and field, you know, winning a bunch of championships and, and whatnot. You get to high school, you start playing wide receiver and safety, you know, you're killing the game, right? But then once the recruiting process starts, now coaches are struggling a little bit on how to recruit you. So what sacrifices did you have to make to decide, okay, I need to play at this level in the college level, I have to now play this position. What was going through your mind at that time during the recruiting process? Um, so in high school, I was thought of myself as an offensive guy more. Um, everybody knew me more of an offensive guy as a receiver. Uh, so um, a lot of schools offered me for uh, both, because I started both sides of the ball, receiver and safety. So I had a lot of double scholarships for just athlete, as they call it. But um, I had a few that were only offense or a few that were only defense. And um, Clemson happened to be one that was only defense. And I don't know, just something something inside of me just wanted to play defense over offense. I, I don't know what it was, but um, went to Clemson and it happened to be a school that wanted me to play defense. And, you know, once I touched down there, um, I, knew, I, I knew that's where I wanted to be. I uh, fell in love with it from the get-go. And... Uh, that was a bit of a struggle because I'm a, I'm a family guy and that's like 17 hours away driving, so. So you're at Clemson now, you're a linebacker, you're one of the better players, obviously you got drafted high. But your brother said one day he visited you and you had this big shoe collection at your apartment. Where did that shoe collection passion, interest start? Was it that from like a younger age or is it when you got to college? Um, I really started liking shoes, I say in college. Uh, I would see a lot of guys just have like all the different Jordans, always getting the new release Jordans. And I'm like, ooh, I, I'm, I'm starting to like these. And uh, I bought my very, the very first pair of shoe Jordans I bought to start my collection, um, the Bread Fours, uh, one of my favorite shoes. Um, actually bought them from, from Bull Bull, uh, a friend of mine plays for the Nuggets now. Um, but uh, ever since then, I just, I haven't stopped and now it's really becoming a problem, but it's a good problem. Wait, but, so you um, bought them for Bull Bull, did they fit him? Him? Or, yeah, did you yeah, keep them? He has a small size, he wears a small shoe size. That dude's like Believe it or not, though. I know, right? It's, but yeah, he, they're size 13s. <laughs> a 7 one dude fitting into a size 13 shoe? Yeah. Bro, that's unheard of. Unless his foot's grown, his foot maybe has grown now. You get to a point where now you need, you know, you need the swag to fit the shoes. You get to the NFL. You're one of the more fashionable guys in the locker room. Would you consider yourself one of the more fashionable guys in the locker room? I think so, yeah. And who's your top three? Because I'll give three? I'll give you Kirk's top three, and you tell me what, okay. how you feel about that, and then you give me your top three. Kirk said it was Kyler, AJ, and he put himself up there. I get it. All these guys. And I, he said, I it. I, and then he topped it off with, you know, D Hop has some style in here. Is that your top three? So Kirk did. Hold on. Before we get there, Kirk didn't mention me on any list. Because he told me that he mentioned me and y'all edited me out. So I, I need to know the truth. Bro, this is what he said. If some guys, see, he takes more, I guess, it takes more creativity to dress yourself. So he said some people have stylists or personal shoppers and whatnot. So then the credit kind of diminishes a little bit. Yeah. I some people he named may have one, but... I, won't say I mean, we're, we're not throwing with the bus. Not no yeah. there, but um, no, um, those guys definitely can all dress. I, I agree with him on that. But um, other guys, let me think. I mean, Byron Murphy can dress. I'm going. I'm putting Murphy in my top three. I'm going with my defensive guy. Um, so now this is the offense, defense, fashion <laughs> rivalry. No, or what? no. no um, it's hard to do a top three. I can do a top five for you though. So my top five will be Byron Murphy, Marco Wilson, Christian Kirk. Um, you put a rookie in there. That's impressive. Yeah, I like the way he. I like the way he dresses. Um, I like AJ's swag. And then I I don't know Hop Christian or Kyler. One of them. You can't go wrong with either of them. Well, you said you won't give me a top I five. Know. You gave me like it's eight It's harder guys. than I thought. You didn't, you didn't even mention yourself. Are you like undisputed number one? Like yeah, you have the I, top? I, yeah. 
I thought so. so. So what is it about swag? You know, you, I asked Kirk the same question. I mean, you walking up that ramp on game days, you have that 20 seconds to show off the fit. You know, what is it about those 20 seconds? I mean, fashion to me is just being able to, you know, basically just express your personality through the clothes. And, um, you know, some, I, a lot of times I just figure something out literally right before the game. Um, or other times I have things planned out of what I want to wear, but basically I just, I feel like it just is a way that someone can express themselves um, from any way. You know, you could be a nice clean cut suit guy. You could be a streetwear guy. You could be like a high fashion designer guy. It's just so many different things um, that you could do just to be able to express yourself. And you do that through shoes? And through yeah, clothes, I've clothes. everything, you know, through the shoes, the hats, the, the coats, the, the glasses, just, it could be just so much that could just tie into it. You know, the bag, just. Fashion is a big part of your guys' repertoire and whatnot, but music is also a big thing. What, what are you listening to on game day? Um, honestly, I'm an R&B guy. I like to go in the game with a calm mind, play calm, have my mind basically at ease. Um, Brent, are you listening to a lot of Brent? Yeah, I love Brent, love Brent. Um, Tim's, she's killing it right now. She's killing it. That, that track with Drake was just yeah. on another level. Um, yeah, I would say people around those genres, um, definitely. But you also like Doja Cat, from what I heard. <laughs> you also like you know, Type Dollar Sign. There's a yeah. specific song by him that, that you like. Yeah. Why is it important to have range? Um. I'm just based off whatever mood you're in. I mean, like, I'm not always in the mood to listen to rap. Most of the time, I'm not in the mood to listen to rap. Um, we're just talking about that. Um, it's mostly around football settings where I want to listen to rap. But at home, I like, you know, just like house music, calming things. Nothing that's going to get me, like, super hyped. Yeah. Like, <laughs> Is there a specific artist that talks to you a little bit more than others? Come I mean, on, man. Everybody knows Drake talks to everybody. And, and in different ways, right? Like yeah. if you're simping over a lady, like Drake gonna talk to you. If exactly. you hype, or you're trying to get hype for a game, Drake gonna talk to you. Exactly. If you, just, if you need like Can some never personal space, bro, Drake gonna talk to you. So, I mean, yeah. He meets all needs. In what ways does Drake talk to you more than others? I mentioned like four ways right there, but is Yeah, this um, other than those ways, um, I like how his music just kind of makes, it doesn't have to make you think, but if you want to think about the lyrics he's saying, um, you know, I, I feel like he's a really great lyricist. Now you're in the NFL, man. Year one, year two, what was the biggest difference? Obviously in year one, you didn't have a complete preseason. You had, you know, what, a different type of training camp heading into that rookie year. What was the hardest part of that? Um, I guess just the unknown, not knowing anything. Every day was a new day. Um, and this year, I mean, I guess everything's still, every day is still a new day just because I've never had a regular season. Uh, but it's a lot easier just knowing that last week may be very similar to this week. So that's the biggest thing. I guess just knowing what is coming opposed to just trying to guess. Trying to guess. So now year two, you have a complete preseason, a complete training camp. One of the things that your brother said is you play your best when you play free. And I feel like in year two, you're playing more free compared to year one. It's starting to seem like what we saw at Clemson in year two. Would you say that's the case or, you know, what's been the difference in year two? The consecutive snap counts and um, just everybody having trust in me, knowing that I can, you know, make those plays. Um, and yeah, I really say that it just all just comes down to others trusting me. I mean, y'all at the top of the NFL standings, I don't want to jinx, I don't know if you believe in jinx or, or whatnot, but kind of like knocking on the door of, of the postseason of that number one seed, potentially. Um, you know, what's been the biggest difference this season with the team compared to last year's? Um, I say that just like the focus and the want to. Um, everybody seems to be on the same page. Everybody has the same end goal. And it seems like everyone's willing to sacrifice for it. So when you have guys who are selfless and are willing to sacrifice and everyone has the same end goal, then uh, phase is just what you get. Would you say the veterans have made a, a, a big difference? Obviously signing JJ, AJ, JC, and all yeah. those guys. And I'm, I mean, just like the, our vets here, JJ, Wah, AJ, um, 
you know, talking to the rookies, talking to, you know, second year players like me, um, you know, just having regular conversations, just interacting with everybody opposed to, I mean, they could easily come in here like, oh, I've had this career. I don't, you know, I'm staying away. I do this on my own, I'm doing this. Nobody's like that here. From Hop to JJ to AJ, uh, Rodney, nobody. I mean, I talk to Rodney every day. And, um, you know, that's our offensive center. I mean, that's just, having guys like that really makes a huge difference. All right, bro, we talked everything from your creativity, your imagination, your love for fashion, your love for music, your performance on the field from college to the NFL. I appreciate you joining the vibes. Yep. I'll catch you. you I'll catch me. you on Vanguard at some point yeah. in the offseason. You know, best of luck the rest of the way, man. Appreciate it.